You are now listening to FNB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FNB Radio. People, we're one week away from Thanksgiving, which I don't know what that means to you. I don't know what that means to me, honestly. All I know is that I still have a turkey in the freezer, which keeps haunting me. Every time I think about the turkey in the freezer, I then have a flash forward to just me with a hairdryer on the low setting, just trying to thaw out a turkey. People do this every single year, and I'm just, I don't know why I'm trying to do this myself. I need to just go ahead and pull it out. Um, but I just can't get into high gear. I'm just drowning in work, and I cannot get my head out of my ass enough to, like, care about Thanksgiving. But it's happening whether we want to or not. Like the train has left the station, so we might as well just get on board, proverbially, because we're, it's already gone. So I don't know how you could get on board if it's already left the station. It seems like you missed the train, which would be cool in my case. I would be like, somehow if I could just home alone myself uh, through Thanksgiving, that would be ideal for me. Like I just wake up and, oh, shit, my family just left without me. <laughs> I'm at home. I have a clean house. I have some money. And I have these two legs to carry me to Food Lion. And that's like, that's what I'm fantasizing about right now as we, you know, look down this coming week. Because essentially, people that work, that listen to this podcast, if you're a person that works for a living, um, which if you're not, Maybe hit me up later and tell me how you're doing that. Would love to know how to make that possible for myself. But anyway, I feel like this week has gotten, you know, it's just a a smash in the face of people getting caught up for holiday work, in my industry anyway, because they're not going to be around for the holidays, so they need to cram everything into the next couple days. Uh, So this week was, I'm not joking, like 12-hour days, for me, which I'm not looking for sympathy here as much as I am just saying you're probably in the same boat and I'm sorry. (laughs) I know everyone is like going full tilt into this week coming up because essentially by Tuesday, it's the weekend again. So we have like Saturday and Sunday, which I'm not even treating as a weekend. I'm just pretending they're just a regular fucking miserable day. You know what I mean? Because I can't, I can't slow down right now. I have to keep barreling forward despite everything in my life kind of falling apart, um, despite the turkey still being in the freezer, despite me not having the fucking emotional stamina to go to Trader Joe's, I don't have what it takes to participate in this holiday this year, but it's coming whether we like it or not. So I found a way um, to do what I always do, which is just like just stumble through it. And that's my plan. If you're stumbling through it and you have no fucking idea where you're going to be on Thursday or how it's going to go, I'm with you. And I think when it's all said and done, maybe it'll be fun. Maybe we'll have a good time. And maybe in some way there will be some small still moment that you found for yourself where you were like, hey, this is worth it. Maybe it's a bite of food which I am excited about the food. I'm always excited about the food. That's like, that's the, the bait, you know, that's what they get you in with is the promise of a good meal. The hook, the spiky thing that stabs you through your nose bone um, and then pulls you by your face to somewhere you didn't ask to go, that's your family and friends. <laughs> that's them. Uh, so they're going to be there, you know. That's the, that's the nasty little surprise at the end. No, I, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. It's, I am excited to see my family. I'm excited to do everything. I just, I just wish there was more time, you know? I feel like at this time of year, I want to turn to drugs. I want to turn to like, maybe I should revisit Adderall. I know that never worked for me before, but like maybe it could work now. <laughs> I think a lot of people get into that desperation where it's like everyone you know is uh, just secretly considering drugs and alcohol as the answer. They're just like, I don't know. Maybe that works. 
it's never worked before, or maybe it's not working currently, but it's probably going to be the thing that fixes it. And there's just a lot of desperate people out there. I don't even necessarily mean desperate in, in the same ways. They're desperate in different ways. Some of them are just like emotionally desperate. Some of them are like physically desperate. Like they're just tired. They don't feel like making food. Some people are psychologically desperate where it's like, I, I'm, I'm on a, a trigger here. And if one more thing goes wrong in this parking lot, like that's, those are the people I'm scared of, you know? And I also am those people. So there's, that's why I'm scared of them. Cause I'm in my in head being like, I know where I'm at. So look at this fucking psycho. He's definitely close, you know? And I'm a normal person. I feel like <laughs> I just made myself laugh at that. Um, there's definitely nothing normal about anyone this time of year. And so I feel like if you're just desperate, even, um, in any of those ways that I just described, maybe you're, you're lonely, which is its own kind of desperation. Um, and it's a real thing this time of year, like all jokes aside, like being, being alone can actually be like, no, nobody's winning. You know what I mean? The people that are alone, like wish they were with someone, the people that are with someone wish they were alone. No one's winning. They're just not. And how, when the holiday is designed to, to make you realize that you're grateful for something and maybe in its fucked up way, it does maybe in its own special hell, you are grateful. Maybe it's just, you're grateful to be in one piece and be leaving that holiday gathering. Maybe you're grateful that you have one to go to. Maybe you're grateful that it's different than last year. Um, but whatever you're doing, I hope you do find some small way, even if it's as a side effect, even if gratitude is a side effect of some bullshit that you have to do that you don't want to do. I hope that you can find it because that's what I'm doing. I've, I've ran the roller coaster of emotions. Um, and it's like, I don't know. Do I need, do I need to be this stressed out? Is there a way in which I just float in casually, um, and like wave my hands over something and then it's, it just tastes good and people like it and there's no weird conversations and there's no lack of conversation. I talked to one person I, and this I had never heard uh, even considered because I was like, my family, if anything, there's not going to be any awkward silences. Like you might be praying for one, but there's not one coming. But then I've never considered the alternative. And this is what I mean. Gratitude is a side effect. Like this one person I spoke to, she was like, yeah, you know, I don't want to go to Thanksgiving because it's just, we're just going to sit there and stare at each other. And I was like, wait, that's, that is an option. That's not an option I had ever considered, but that's some people's reality too. And I think in my own way, I'd prefer to be like, shut the fuck up. than be like hearing people's, you know, chewing, which is one way to trigger people. If they're psychologically desperate and, and it's just a bunch of teeth hitting teeth, through squishy casseroles, there might be some violence. I don't know. I don't know what people are capable of this time of year. I wouldn't bet on anything except for the fact that gratitude will be a side effect and not the centerpiece. But <laughs> this is a very cynical view of Thanksgiving, but it's just where I'm at. That's just where I'm at. And I, I just want to say in all the hustle and bustle, there's still these little sweet mo Oh my God, there was this great moment. See, look at you guys. You've really turned me around. Just by letting me be cynical for a minute, now I'm, now I'm turning grateful. It's like a magic trick. I was coming out of a client's house. This was a few days ago. And I'm walking across the street to get some water out of my car because I have a problem with hydrating. And we were in between episodes. And so I ran out to my car. I'm crossing the street. This very beautiful woman is running down the street. She's got her headphones in. And then she just pops one out and she goes, I'm listening to the Lowland episode right now. And just keeps on jogging with a big smile on her face. And I was like, wait, what? Come back here. And so I like kind of flagged her down. And I was like, wait, you're listening to my podcast? 
And she's like, yes, I listen to it all the time. Her name was Susan. Shout out to you, Susan. I don't know where you you are in Thanksgiving right now. I don't know what you're up to, but I just wanted to tell you that that moment made my day. Just, uh, just to think that I never get to see it in action. I just imagine it or don't imagine it. I don't know. I ne- Maybe I just never really think about it. But watching this woman, Susan, her name's Susan. I did ask her her name. I was like, what's your name? And she's like, Susan. And I was like, wow, I'm Lindsay. Um, running in her neighborhood, just casually running down the street, listening to my show, I was like, that is cool to see it in the wild, that ha- people enjoying the show in the wild. Well, I don't know. She didn't specifically say she was enjoying the show, but she must because she listens to it. So I'm going to just assume that she enjoys it. Um, but she said that she always listens to the show and that she was having a run and listening to the episode about the meatball. And in that moment, I was like, wow, this is, um, this is why you do it. This, is, this almost makes you feel not crazy for setting up a microphone and talking in your bedroom uh, while your family is just like outside. Like, why, are, why do we always have to be quiet? <laughs> but anyway, moments like that make me realize that even amongst the hustle and bustle, Susan was trying to take care of herself. You know, she's got to get out there and get that fresh air, get her run in or her walk in or whatever she was up to that day and, uh, and, and have a little laugh or learn a little something. And that's all I've ever wanted to do with this show. And so it felt like a real, I've made it moment because Susan, uh, does me the great honor of it bringing me along on a run, but it made my day. And it just, Susan, shout out to you. Thanks. It's literally people like you that keep me going. It's the ones that say, I'm listening to your show right now. And speaking of that, the show's been on the charts and it's no surprise. Anytime I talk about Jason Stanhope, I feel like the show just like, I don't know, goes straight to the top of the charts, (laughs) but uh, it's been doing really well. And it, it's nice to see that because I had taken a couple of weeks off. And that's just a reminder, too, that if you need a break from something, you got to take your break because we always fear that, like, we're losing traction or we're going to lose our place in line or, like, you know, it's the mental equivalent of being in the grocery store and thinking you can just get out of line. And, and the tragedy that comes with getting out of line to go get that thing you forgot. In this case, the thing you forgot to do was, like, take a break. Um, the fact is you you get right back in line and you don't really miss a beat and it's never too late to just pick up and start again. So you don't have to have this fear and, and the, the metrics of the show are something that I try not to focus on. And I, I, I produce other shows. So I'm always trying to advise my clients to do the same, which is like, don't get caught up in the metrics. Like make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. If you're doing things just, just for the metrics, um, it's just a soulless slow trudge to disappointment. You're just never going to get what you want and the product, whatever you're doing or offering or creating or making will just start to suck more because you're just not, you're losing sight of why you did it to begin with. So even if it's cooking, even if it's writing, if it's creating, if it's any sort of um, passion that you have or something that you've been working towards, fitness, it doesn't matter what it is. No, you're not going to lose your place if you take a break. Um, and that was a good reminder because the show is, as soon as I come back, the show's back up on the charts. And that makes me feel just really secure in the fact that I'm doing the right thing and that my pace is the right pace. And I think a lot of people have a hard time with that because they're, they let the world set the pace for them. And I'm guilty of this as well. And it's just been something I'm trying to be really, especially this holiday season intentional about, which is not, over committing myself. Like I even said to someone, I was like, we're allegedly having a birthday party for Roman. Like I won't send out invitations. <laughs> I won't even formally invite people because I'm like, this is alleged until I decide that I have the capacity to do this. And I won't know if I have the capacity to do this until Thanksgiving is over. Because right now it's all in theory, it's all possible. But come Black Friday, I may be just a shriveled up little, you know, mess of a person. If you've seen me lately, you're like, yeah, you kind of are a mess. But it's, I just don't want to overcommit. And I, I can't recommend that enough to you. It's like, don't, don't let someone trap you into a cookie swap. Don't. 
Don't let someone trap you (laughs) into any sort of bullshit that you don't want to do. You just don't need it. You're not going to miss it. You're not, you might think you will, but you won't. Less is more at this holiday season. You know what I mean? Just do less. Sorry, as I'm trying to record this podcast, there's just, if I don't know if you can hear this knocking sound, but there's just, they seem to be like the size of a carpenter bee, but it's just a fly just thumping on the window. And this is concerning because yesterday, the chimney sweep saga continues. Um, we finally did get the chimney swept and we lit a fire and it was going great. And then the boys were like, mom, there's all these flies coming in through the chimney. I was like, Oh God, is there, is there like a dead body up there? Is there like a, some rat that's died? We just had it swept. How could this happen? Like what's going on? We, we don't smell anything, but there's like, I'm not joking, like probably 10, 10 very large flies. Like these flies must be like at least 150 years old. Like, I've never seen a fly this fully grown. And it's just, in general, makes you feel disgusting. And then you just start looking at yourself like, am I okay? Am I dead? Did I die? Like, what's going on? Why are there so many flies in here? And I lived in an apartment in Bushwick one time where my psychopath roommate left town to go back to Missouri and she locked her cat's litter box without cleaning it into her room but it's just a made up house. There were no, like it's a loft in McKibben street. So there's just no real ceilings. There's just pieces of sheetrock that people had built. Like they were, I don't know, living in the subway system in the eighties. So it was just very ramshackly built, but there was still a door that was locked. So I would have had to break her door down to get in there and then, and then figure out that that was where it was coming from. But the flies were able to get everywhere because they can, you know, fly. And so they were swarming our apartment and I was just in a frenzy. Like I was the only one who cared. I was like cleaning every cabinet, every surface. I was putting fly paper, which if you ever have to resort to fly paper inside, that's just a, that's a level of self-esteem that you might never recover from where it's just like, there's, that's what you call an infestation. Um, it's ugly and it's gross and it's, (laughs) It's really alarming to have that many bugs in your house. But uh, this was not that extreme. Like I was able to kill the 10 flies that did come in. But now as I'm sitting here, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This fly, it's like he wants to come in. It's like there's these giant flies that are attacking our home. And I don't know what's going on. And I don't know what that means about me or what else. It's got to be something I haven't done, right? There's got to be like... There's something somewhere in the house. There's like an, uh, I don't know, some food somewhere that the kids have left that, or like an animal dead in the walls or like in the attic or something. I don't know. There's no smell. And it, it, it just happened yesterday. My friend Mari was here. She saw me in full fly freak out. We were all had towels and we're all like trying to like understand why when I had left in the morning before yesterday morning I left the house and there were no flies and then I come back in and there was just like flies everywhere and Mari helped me try to kill some but also this is a good reminder to get tickets to Rip City which is happening Saturday November 18th it's at Silver Hill Studios I am not in the show but I am going to try to come to the show but you know what in in it depends on my mental state (laughs) it really everything just hinges on everything's just a big old question mark will I be there I don't know but you should go assuming that you're well and um, it's going to be a really good show. But she, she can attest to that. She saw the flies and now there's just one that just keeps ramming its big weird eyes into the screen by my window. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just, there's just a dead body next door. That's, that's how unsurprising my life is these days. That's how just insane everything is that even the craziest shit seems normal. I'm like, I don't really want to go look, but I feel like it's definitely the neighbors. And someday, I feel like I've talked about them on here before, but someday I'll get into what I think is happening at the neighbor's house. And let me just say, something is rotten over there in more ways than one. Um, But, you know, who am I? I'm just the person that sits in the window all the time and sees everything that's happening at this house. And it's mysterious. And, And it feels like a scam. And 
someday I'll get to the bottom of it. But I'm I, right now it's just one of those things that I'm going to wait until it comes out on the news that there's, you know, and I'll be like, I knew it. But I'm going to wait till the till the live five news van rolls up. I'm not going. I'm not going to be the one to discover it. I don't want to be that neighbor that gets interviewed and is like, I always thought he was weird. I don't want to do that. I I don't I don't want that to be my first television ex- experience. Um, that's not true. I've actually had some television experience. Okay, really, my hands have had a television experience, um, and then maybe I think that's it. I was in an episode of uh, the late Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown. And I was the server that waited on him and Glenn from Anson Mills. And you see me for a split second and you see my hands and that's it. So my hands have been on television. I don't want my face on television talking about my neighbor. So I'm just going to do it here on another show. Not this one. I don't have time. I don't have... I don't have all the time that it would take to just talk about the full, um, (laughs) it starts with a fire. Just know that, which we can, you can interpret that any way you want. Um, but it does start with a big fire and someday I'll tell you the rest of the story. But for now, I just want you to know that wherever you're at, emotionally, psychologically, physically, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> creatively uh, I'm some version of that with you because it's just a hard time and it's also a really fun celebratory time so get something get some little life raft that you can cling to even if it's a chocolate babka you know or a pull apart bread of some kind or a baked oyster with toasted brioche soldiers which is what I'm going to be clinging to I got a bunch of oysters. I ordered them from Low Country Oyster. And I'm going to make... I do something that people will like, will just turn their head and be like, (gasps) but I take oysters that you would normally serve on the half shell. You can call them selects, whatever you want. And I take them and I bake them. And I know that's controversial because they're expensive, right? They're like $3 a piece. And retail. I don't know what they are if you buy them wholesale. I think it's less. I got, I think I got a hundred for $129. So that's less than a dollar. That's a good deal, actually. Wait, no, 179. Anyway, the point is they were about a dollar a piece, which is still expensive if you're trying to serve oysters to a large crowd, but at the same time, it's a luxury item and you're not trying to get full. It's not bottomless baked oysters. But I take those kind of oysters instead of the big ones. Like a lot of people, if you go to restaurants, they use like the bigger, meatier, kind of chewier, um, sloppier, less desirable uh, oysters for baked oysters. And I get it. It works. It's the same way you would use them for, you know, an oyster. (laughs) Oh boy, please don't make me say that again. Or something like that. But I use the selects because I'm a psycho who just doesn't understand the concept that I am not wealthy. I just won't accept that. So I just go around as if I am. But I use these small ones and I make a compound butter with chives and shallots and lemon juice and lemon zest and just hot sauce and and make this beautiful compound butter, parsley, whatever you want. Um, And then I put it back into the fridge, into a roll, and then I slice it and put it on these little select oysters and broil them in the oven until the butter melts, put some Parmesan on top, and it's my favorite thing to eat. So that's going to be the life raft that I'm clinging to. That's my little sliver of sunshine. That's my emotional support appetizer. So find yourself an emotional support appetizer or entree or snack or bite uh, or however you want to do it and, and enjoy yourself. For the love of God, just find a way. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'll see, I'll see if I see you next week. I might take next week off. I'm just going to tell you now. It's a lot going on. But maybe I'll, get the, uh, maybe I'll get a wild hair and do the episode. But if not, on a real serious note, I am thankful for you. And I'm thankful for Susan. And I'm thankful for every single person that listens to this show and continues to support this show. (laughs) 
and continues to put up with my bullshit. And I just love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye.